Yo, we are back with Operation Get almost every skill to 30, and then do some quests for the ones that we can't get to 30, and then get those to 30, and then start doing quests. So let's go ahead and get back on thieving. It's been fun so far. I was kind of a uh, falling asleep doing ranged in a bad way. Sometimes you kind of want to fall asleep in this game, right? But uh, thieving is fun so far. I'm going to get as far as we can. Um, I think we need to get to 15 so I can go get some opals from special pickpocketing NPCs in Lumbridge. I'll double check that here while we finish hitting 15. Enjoy. Thievery 11. Thievery, 12. Thievery, 13. Two more. Now I feel certain chests. Uh, cool. I think I noticed this uh, Town Crier NPC before. It's kind of cool. So you have NPCs near events that players are likely to spend time in that, like, share changes to the game that you might not have, you may have missed if you weren't reading the patch notes. It's kind of cool. Thieving 14. Fifteen thievery. Alright, now I need to figure out how to do this next thing. Ham followers. You can steal the cowbells from dairy cows? That seems so stupid. I don't know, that's funny to me. Alright. Um, I'm going to deposit the stuff I've already stolen and then I'll look up how I can find these ham followers. Okay, I think I found the location where these folks are. I think they're like here, maybe. Let's go find out. So, like I said earlier, I try not to Google too far ahead. I try not to take always the most optimal route. I mean, it's fun to pickpocket different things at different times um, for different skills. But I have taken to like, whenever we get to a new step, seeing, okay, what's what's the recommended way to skill up here and why? But we've been breaking those rules in a lot of cases, like doing the rooftop courses only for agility to get the graceful outfit. In this case, as far as I know, I don't have many other ways to get my hands on, uh, on Opal other than to go to this place I'm headed to now. It looks like I overshot it up the road, I'll have to keep that in mind next time. Attempt to pick the lock. That's cool. Hey, we did it! Okay, that's kind of cool that you get lockpicking. And some fun stuff with this. It's ham members that I'm looking out for. You steal some buttons! You steal a raw chicken! What do these people have in there? Cool. Ham robe. Let's try to figure out what ham is. Tinderbox. So I thought pickpocketing was going to be mostly coins, so that's kind of cool that there's different things you can get from it. God, this drop table is enormous. I did not know this going into it. Oh wow, that's never happened before. Wake up in an unknown place. Jimmy the Chisel. You have to pick a lock to get out? That's pretty cool. Thievery 16. Oh my god, your agility helps you to partially avoid the blow. I know that's right. I just polished the buttons and got 5 crafting XP. That's really silly. <laughs> this game is, is too much sometimes, I love it. 1100 gold for polished buttons? What? Oh, I've got a random event, Captain Arnold. Unlock his chest. Sure. Bar. Ring. Oh. It's how high alking the gold ring gives me just barely not enough to get a profit. 
I'm having a blast with this. This is super fun. It's really cool with the gold, the buttons being worth a decent amount of money too. I can probably dump most of this crap. The label says vivid crimson, but it looks pink to me. It looks like I can select uh, open and it will just keep trying until it succeeds. I thought I was going to right click the door every time to open the door. Good to know. You got some uncut jade, that's cool. Thieving 17, we're getting there. Ham logo? What? Oh, it's actually worth some money. The cape? Oh no, it's a... Uh, it's an amulet. It's interesting. Hey, I got a trapped NPC. As long as she doesn't throw me in jail, we'll see. I love your agility. Helps you partially avoid the blow. It, it makes the Falador agility course so worth it. Although, you know, that reminds me. Last session, I did not pay my taxes. I did not do any agility because I was just having such a good time doing other stuff. So I think we're going to have to do... We're going to have to make up for it and do two hours. Not right now, though. We're, let's... Let's, uh... Let's finish getting to 30 pickpocketing and maybe we'll think about it. Hey, it's an uncut opal! This is the whole reason we came to these guys and not other people. Alright, that, uh... That changes everything. Now that I can get those, I can make a couple more enchantable things. I can make some, uh... Make a necklace that lets me resist the stun from them catching me. Hey, baby 18. Wonderful. Anyway, I can make that necklace. I can, uh... I think I had one other one. Oh, the Slayer bracelet. Yeah, it's part of why we wanted to do this before training up Slayer to 40. So I wanted to have that so we can complete Slayer tasks faster and get Slayer points faster. But I think I want to build up quite a few of those if we can. Let's have a little ham set. Hey, that's the full ham set, I think. Oh, we might still need a chess piece, but then I think we have it. More opals are good. I can just pull up the recipe that I want out of that. Oh wow, if the player's wielding a full set of ham gear, you're less likely to be caught while pickpocketing. That's so cool! It must be set up to give me to not give me duplicate pieces. Like maybe that's on purpose. This game has so many flavorful things like that. Super into it. Thieving 19, and then we get to pickpocket different members once we get to 20. I think we have other stuff we can do at 20 also, so we'll see. Okay, so I need shirt, robe, hood, cloak, logo, boots, and gloves. Looks like I gotta go deposit stuff and come back anyway. Thievery is super fun so far. I mean, I think I was joking. Oh, shoot, wrong way. I was joking earlier that it's really funny that, uh, like, human characters are basically just gathering nodes and you can sit there and pickpocket them indefinitely and get an endless amount of loot. Uh, I was enjoying thieving back when the only loot from the man I was picking was coins, but since they have big drop tables, that makes it kind of exciting and a little bit fun to, like, juggle and see what stuff you can try to go for. I'm wondering if there are any, like, truly lucrative pickpocket targets later on in the game. Um, so as far as making a plan of where to go next, I might stay in this ham area for a while because I want to get as many uncut opals as possible. As far as I know, this is my only predictable way to access them, other than mining, and mining doesn't seem to be predictable. If I get a good number of them... We can probably look up and see what's an efficient place to go uh, later. But it should take us a ways forward, so let's see what we can do. Thieving 20. I've unlocked the new guys. Let's do them. 
I think I'm going to stay here either until level 25 uh, or until I get a total of five uncut opals. I think I'm up to three. I'll think about it. I guess whenever I make a bank run while doing this, I need to heal on there, right? So. At some point I should pop over to Varrock and just buy an ungodly amount of cook shrimp and use it specifically to top off from visiting a bank, because I don't want to use my good multi-health healing items for topping off at a bank, right? I didn't really think about it at the time, but this makes me really glad that I didn't train uh, Beavery too early. I was wanting to do it back when I had like 11 hit points, but life is much easier when you uh, have like 44 hit points. Oh, I can sneak out the back and get there? That's a cool trick. Thank you, autopathing. Usually I hate you, but in this case, you did something smart. I didn't realize I was coming out here the dumb way before. Eating 21. We should get to 25 in no time. I need to heal and make another trip. I might try to make the... Uh item that lets you ignore getting stunned while picking pockets. I think it burns out pretty fast, but we'll get a chance to try it out, right? Oh dang, I didn't realize I was missing the ham cape. I wonder if that's going to make this even easier. Thieving... Oh, I said 575, that makes more sense. Thieving 22. Okay, so if I want to not get uh, stunned when I get hit, I can make a special item that makes me resist it. To look up what it is and what the recipe for it is. I just know it involves opal. Yeah, so okay. Level 1 enchant. Cosmic rune, water rune. Dodgy necklace. So it needs an opal necklace, not an opal amulet. Necklaces. Opal, necklace mold. Silver bar? Oh, I haven't made silver bars yet. Can I do that? Smelting silver ore requires 20 smithing. And it attains with a mining skill. It requires 20 mining to obtain. Getting 40 XP. So try to fill up my molds when I can so that they run out of stock quickly. So I looked it up. I guess there's some silver ore north of Alcarid, so we'll go do that leave with the dodgy necklace before we go back down there. Should have brought the graceful set. Didn't want to swap it, didn't realize how far away this was. Oh well. Oh, 99 second countdown on silver. Did not know that was a thing. That's interesting. That's a fun exploration of the gathering design space. Oh crap, so... I'm in this uh, silver ore page on the wiki, just trying to make sure that this is a reasonable place to farm for it. And it mentions that there's stuff you can do in the crafting guild, which I now know that there are a bunch of guilds in the game that require different levels, like there's the fishing one we passed back in episode one. Um, what was the big one? I guess the magic guild is like 66, we got a ways to go on that. Anyway, uh, it says the crafting guild is accessible at level 40, which we're 38 from doing all the leather. So it's not a not a huge priority, but I might want to try to finish hitting 40 on crafting. One, for non-clinical OCD reasons, having it be a base 10 number, uh, but also because I think there's good shit in guilds. While we're in here, let's just look at it. what's what's the deal with the crafting guild. Oh, mighty level 32. Not intentional, but we'll take it. Oh, there's a bunch of like molds that spawn there, spawn and respawn there. There's useful tools, private mine, just a tanner, okay. Spinning wheel, holy shit. Well, too late now. I mean, I guess I needed the leather. It, it looks like there's a cow pen right next to the tanner. So you can tan stuff right there and then get rid of it, but uh, 
we needed to, to get past leather uh, in order to even get to 38 crafting in the first place, so. Sort of like how, you know, you play Final Fantasy VII, you defeat the super boss, and it drops master materia, and you're like, that would have been really nice before I fought this boss. And we just finished mining a bunch of silver, turned it into bars, deposited it. Figure this will probably last me on silver for a little while. I'll try to make this dodgy necklace. Alright, we're just gonna make one necklace now so I can try it out, see how useful it is. If it's worth it, I might make a stack of them in the future, but one's probably okay for now. So I need the uncut opal. I need. Necklace molds. I guess I don't need any other uh, necklaces, so I'll just make two of them. So I have a opal, opal. Need a chisel, right? Opals. Let me make sure I tag these things so I can identify them more easily in the future. Oh, you know, maybe I only needed to have. A I'm guessing the mold wasn't consumed. I forgot about that. I didn't need to buy multiples. That's okay. I'll have the necklace mold available indefinitely then. Opal necklace. Cool. Do not use lose the molds so I can just have one of each of those eventually and be set. Awesome. Now I think I just have to cast an enchant on those, which uses a cosmic rune. Cosmic rune, water rune. Dodgy necklace. Okay. I guess the problem is my current ham gear set that makes me less likely to get arrested includes a neck piece. But I'll try it anyway, and we'll take one trip where we give it a shot and see how it goes. Back to ham. Really like the idea of there being like thievery skilling areas. Like areas that you can't get into without pickpocketing that are pretty much just for pickpocketing. Adding like a custom feature like them arresting you if you pick too many pockets is cool. Bummer, I forgot to heal while I was out. Oh well. I guess I figured I'd get enough region from mining, but I guess region in this game is super slow, huh? Man, it is way easier to pickpocket from stalls. Dag, yo. Also, I thought the dodgy net was going to proc every time that I got caught, but it's a pretty low proc chance. And given that it only has 10 charges, it might not be worth it. I probably should have saved one of those opals for uh, making the Slayer thing, which I actually do want. That's okay. Uh, even though stalls appear to be better, I'm going to stick with where we're at right now, because I want to get as many opals as possible. So we'll just do ham members until 25 and then I should have enough opals to make the bracelets I need for uh, Slayer points training. Okay, fast forward. Still working on uh, inventory management with this tag system that comes with OS Buddy. Um, I think I'm going to move to only highlighting tools in blue if it's the highest level version of that tool that I can use at the moment, then I'll downgrade other stuff to red. I was about to do that with the steel pickaxe, but I guess it sells on the Grand Exchange pretty well, so we won't drop those. Thieving 23. Uh, I haven't been kicked out before. He was just thrown in jail. Right on. Thieving 24. If you're wondering why I'm not opening the coin pouches, I know someone watching the live stream was going crazy from that. Um, my thought process on that is that I do not get coins directly from these guys, ever. Uh, but I do get coin pouches. And either way, it's going to take up one inventory slot. 
but if I just leave them as coin pouches, I don't have to keep... They'll, they'll take up two slots until I remember to click it. So as long as I just leave it as a pouch, it's the same thing. It's still one slot. I can just open it when I'm done with thieving. I think that that's probably correct. All right. Back to work. Let's do it. Remember if I get another talisman neck piece that I have to equip it once my new dodgy necklace breaks. First one broke and actually saved myself quite a bit of damage and quite a bit of time, so... Actually, I'm glad that I bought it. Though I haven't found any opals while we've been down there. Hopefully we luck out with that. I did not realize I could pickpocket these guys sitting in the... Oh, no, wait. I can't. <laughs> I thought there was someone in the chair that I was able to steal from, but that's not correct. I wonder how much agility speeds up theory training if it's having you reduce the damage from the blows most of the time. It's really cool that they're kind of like synergistic skills. I guess you have like attack and strength are like that, but I can't think of any other two that are that closely intertwined. I guess there's probably some crafting skills that are. Hey, there's the ham necklace. Cool. So once my dodgy necklace busts, we'll put one of those. There's an opal. Man, I think that's like one of their rarest drops. I want to make a bunch of those Slayer. I do like that you can speed click uh, pickpocket. If you're not getting stunned, you can steal a lot of stuff back to back, it looks like. Leaving 25, that's what we were going for. And I think we have enough opals to do fun stuff with uh, Slayer bracelets for a while. We might have to come back here to try to pickpocket some more, but maybe it'll be easier if I can just spam click, drop all the garbage for a higher level thieving and they catch us less often. Pocket warriors steal from fruit stalls and enter the sorceress's spring garden. Sorceress's spring garden, that's kind of cool. Warriors. Fruit stalls, so I can try to track down. Let me Google that real quick. I have to have favor to be able to steal from there? Huh. How do I get, I don't know what favor is. Let me, uh, Sidious. Gaining favor, gaining favor of Sidious, right? Plow the fields until you reach 5%. Buy 850 salt, Peter, and compost. Combine 150 of them and talk to the clerk to reach 20% favor. Woof. There's a quest to do. Can I buy saltpeter from a from a vendor? If so maybe I could do that. If not, I'm not gonna bother. No, I totally can't. Okay. So we're not doing the Hosidious fruit stalls. Um, I never did mess with the silk stalls. I saw those in Ardone. Yeah, I think, unless if I really want something from a pickpocketable, pickpocketable NPC, or if they're a really good source of XP, uh, I think that I am going to stick to stalls if I can. Looks like there's easier ways to like safe spot the guards nearby. Maybe that's not true for every stall, but for the one we've tried. Um, and I do actually want to go back and like get every pickpocket enemy's uh, loot table eventually, but for now, because I feel like it'll be easier to check out their whole loot table when they aren't catching you on every third attempt, right? So now I can open this thing. All right, uh, I think it's silk stalls down in Ardone, so let's go. Passing the Sears Village agility course. Uh, I need to pay my taxes. I'm living on borrowed time at the moment. Uh, after we finish thieving 30, I will do two levels of agility to make up for not doing it yesterday. It won't be that bad. Although now that I have all my marks of agility, I should start researching if there's a better course for me to go to. Going to a new course would be really nice at this point. I'm at 66 agility, so we'll see what all that opens up.
Did not realize I could steal from this stall in the back. Uh, it makes life way easier. Let's just do that. It looks like you're allowed to sell the silk eventually, but it'd have to have a long gap from when you last stole something. 20 minutes or something like that. I almost died from that night. Oh my god. Okay. Hopefully I'm not still aggroed while I'm upstairs. I did not realize how what a dangerous situation I was in. I'm gonna try to prayer myself up to three hit points so I don't get one shot. Knights are nasty. Lesson learned. We still haven't died. 73, almost 74 hours in, and uh, at this point I kind of don't want to. <laughs> I'm gonna see what happens. I guess I just kind of assume that uh, stealing here was gonna be consequence free. When we get outside, I'm gonna go briefly rob from the bread stall to top off my health, and then we'll go back to the silk. Or we'll just grab the stack from this person that's robbing him. That works too. Oh wow, you can steal by standing on top of the NPC the whole time? That's funny. Alright, this is fine. I won't die instantly next time. So the issue is it looks like the food stalls are way more valuable than the, uh, the silk stall. In terms of the item you're getting on, in terms of the XP. Oh my god, those cakes have three uses? One inventory slot? That's wonderful! I need to get like a million of those. Try to keep one in my inventory when I'm exploring new areas. Hey! Thieving 26. Four more thieving levels to go. And then I think we do fishing is what I said next? Yeah, that'll be fun. So cake seal for a total of 12, that's really cool. Especially since I can get them for free right now. I don't think I'm going to get to something that competes with that uh, in crafting for like, or in cooking I should say, for many levels. And ultimately, the reason to level cooking is to get um, access to some of the foods that buff stats so that you can qualify for things a little bit early without actually having to take the skill all the way up. Speaking of which, so I'm researching what agility course should we do since we don't care about Marks of Grace, and I guess there's one called a Werewolf Agility Course in Canifus? I think I can do it. I don't think it requires a quest to read a little bit further. But uh, anyway, I guess it's one of the most like dangerous agility courses in the game. There's a single part of it that can do like 30 damage to you. So it seems like your best bet to be safe from that is to eat some agility boosting food. Um, so I'm like, okay, let me research this agility boosting food. I'll try to make it myself. Maybe we can make that a mini goal to level cooking a bit before we go do agility. Uh, but the item that we need is like level 91 cooking to craft. So that is definitely not happening. Uh, I'm never going to get 91 cooking in this game regardless, you know, independent of the beat condition. So given it's something that I would never craft in the first place, I don't think I'll be feel too bad about buying it from the Grand Exchange. Consumables like that in general don't bug me too much. Oh no, it actually requires 95 cooking, but you can boost it to from 91. Yikes. Yeah, no, we're not. 95 cooking ain't happening. Um, we get back to Varrock later, I'll pop on the Grand Exchange and see if I can buy a few of them and use that for this course. Looks like it also heals hit points, so it'll keep my agility boosted and uh, in case I fall off that thing I'll be okay. Let's see. Werewolf agility course. Level 72, the chance of failure on the death slide is significantly reduced. Okay, so... I think, let's see, I've got 66 agility, the uh, pie that I'm looking to buy gives plus 5 agility, so I'll be just short of the 72, but if I can get 
my first level, the second level should be a lot easier to nab. Leaving 27, I went ahead and grabbed a bunch of cakes from that guy, I was just leaving them on the ground. Save me some time and stealing from it myself. 12 HP per cake, that is, that is pretty great. I also like that it's broken into three bites, so it's easier to avoid overhealing. Oh shit, so the Werewolf Agility course actually requires a quest. Uh, it seems like it's it's pretty good XP per hour compared to Sears Village and the other ones I've been doing. So I think we do want to want to make it happen and do it. Uh, but the quest, get this, requires 20 crafting and 25 thieving. It's almost like this was on purpose. It's almost like the reason I didn't do agility and pay my taxes yesterday is because oh I, I need to get I need to get crafting to 20 and thieving to 25 first so I can do this very XP efficient course. Uh, that is not the case, but we will take advantage of it. I know I was saying I wanted to try to wait to do quests until we could just do them all at once in a big burst, but uh, this course is going to help out a lot. Also, I want to keep paying my taxes and doing my one agility per day until I get to the point where it's miserable. I mean, it's already miserable, but like, you know, two hours or longer per level. One hour I can live with, a little over one hour I can live with, too much more than that, and I will, I will want to die. I think I... I might call a tap out point when we get to 70 because that's a nice round base 10 number that will be pretty to look at. 68 though is an important one to hit because that's the last level we need for uh, quest prerequisites. Thieving 28, two more and then we're going to go do this uh Quest prerequisite for the Werewolf Agility course. Now steal from chests upstairs in Ardone and Relica. Oh, cool. Wonder what's in them. Thieving is a fun skill to me. I think that once we get it to a suitably high level that the chance of failure is reduced, I'm gonna wanna like look at the skill guide and go around the whole game and see if I can tap out the loot tables of most enemies and most like chests. To the extent that's possible, I'm sure there are some chests that spawn irregularly, but that just sounds fun to me. No shit, man. The luck. Uh, so I'm looking at the prerequisites for uh, Creature of Frankenstein? Frankenstein? Just feel like Frankenstein. Uh, it's a quest I need for the Werewolf Agility course. So I need 20 crafting, 25 thieving. Priest in Peril and Restless Ghost are like the only two quests I've done in the game. Unbelievable. So, and it gets better. I need the Ghost Speak Amulet from uh, Restless Ghost, which I totally have. I need Silver Bars, which I just crafted. I need three Bronze Wires, which I made early on for like no particular reason when people said you use that in construction. I need a Needle, which I totally have in here somewhere. There it is. I have a needle. I need five thread, which I have left over from uh, doing crafting skilling. I need a spade, which I got super early on and have been using for that one clue scroll. A hundred coins, which I have all day. So that's just wonderful. I don't have to do anything else to qualify for this quest, and it's through like pure random chance. I'm pumped. We're gonna go. We're gonna do this quest as soon as I hit 30 thieving, which should be not too long from now. I have to make a couple more trips to deposit all this, uh, all this silk. The silk might be a waste. It doesn't look like it sells for much, and it doesn't have much use in the game. But maybe if I come back here later for some other reason, I can try to sell all of it back to the vendor and get some gold out of it. There's 29 thieving. One more. Also, again, able to defeat a level 51 monster, like, only because we leveled magic. Uh, I'll probably have to stop in um, Verok and buy some Chaos Runes. I'm, I'm gonna end up going broke because I'm low on money. Maybe I can sell some of those uh, roots that I found earlier that I've been holding on to for emergency funds. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, this quest is basically calibrated to everything we've randomly chosen to done up to this point. And it, and it ends in 
going to an agility course, which is the very first thing we did. So that's kind of cool. This this one's gonna stick with me. Um, so I'm not reading ahead on the quest description. I'm just making sure I have all the stuff. Uh, we lucked out with Priest in Peril that everything in Priest in Peril was stuff I was able to get to. Although actually, Priest in Peril, I bought those pure essences on the market board uh, because I hadn't done the rune crafting quest yet. You know, I assume the rune crafting quest is going to be something we want to do pretty early on, maybe one of the first quests we do once we move into questing mode. Um, but anyway, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll earn 50 of my own pure essences and then sell them on the market board to make up for that. We needed, we needed to get into Mauritania early so that we could do the Cannabis Agility course. Uh, what was I saying? Um, it, we lucked out with Priest in Peril that, even, that all the items that it required were stuff that I could just get easily, but there could always be an item on one of these prerequisite lists that requires access to a zone that we haven't been to yet, so... Uh, I won't be reading ahead on the quest, I won't be spoiling myself on what's going to happen, but I will look at what items it needs me to have and make sure I have those banked. Um, or on my person when we go to start it. Just so we don't get like 75% of the way through a quest and be like, oh shit, I need to be able to do this or go to this area to, to finish it now. I need 29 more seals to level up and 28 inventory slots, so I'm going to drop one on the ground and just take the rest of them. We haven't done magic combat or safe spotting in a minute, so I'm kind of looking forward to uh, getting back into that. I don't know what the 51 enemy they need me to kill is. Hopefully it's not something that has a ranged attack. Because we're going to have a really bad time if it is. Uh, but as long as it's not, I should be able to get some chaos runes and firebolt it to death without too much... There it is. 30 thieving. Wonderful. Okay, let's start doing this uh, this quest. It seems pretty cool. I might grab this guy's stack of cakes over here. It looks like we're gonna want some food for this adventure. I'll deposit all this stuff. I'll get out the things I need to teleport. Uh, grab his cakes, pop over to Varrock. All that fun stuff. Huh, I didn't think about this, but I do have 30 defense. I should be able to wear that advent full helm eventually. Let me uh, move it so that I don't forget that it's there. I got that as like a random drop, I think. Or maybe it might have been uh, like a clue scroll reward or something. It may have been a clue scroll reward. It was the ancient page. It's uh, I should start keeping track of the items that I've found because I think I'm gonna allow myself to buy back stuff like that in case I need it in the future rather than having to track it down a second time. I'm trying to take advantage of the fact that this is a ten man, ten man account and not a true Iron Man account. Um, the idea being I can sell stuff. I don't want to be able to buy back an unlimited amount, so I don't want to say like, oh, because I sold one Ranar leaf, I can buy a million Ranar leaves and skill up Herbal Lord. that's not the idea. But I think that page must have been for like an achievement diary or something. Um, so I don't know that we're ever really going to stress out about doing the achievement diaries, but in case we do, be okay with buying page one back in the future. Okay, I think that's what we're going to get, so let's go ahead and head to Canifus and do this uh, Thank Constrain quest. It's fun. I think we have an agility shortcut up here to jump into Mauritania, right? A pretty high level one, if I recall. Let's give it a try. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. That is awesome. <laughs> so cool. Don't you like take a specific path to get down to the other railing to get out of here, maybe? So now I'm stuck. I'll climb rocks, I see. That's interesting. It's way faster, though. 
then going all the way through the bottom. Now that I know how to do it, it took me longer than going through the cave with Drizzle, but very cool. That is uh, awesome. I love the agility shortcuts in this game. Just a smart idea. Completed a hard task. Okay, to start the quest, read the signpost in Canifus. Where is this one, maybe? Brain dead butler wanted. A grave doing seals essential. Hunchback advantageous. See a doctor for concern at the castle northeast of Canifus. Okay. Cool. On it. And new music. Open door. What's sex, sorry. I can't catch implings right now, but they used to be popping up on the screen with a tooltip, and they're not now. I don't know why. I'll look into it later. Gardener Ghost, that's a player character. People are upstairs. Here he is. Dr. Fenkenstrain, what's up, dude? You come to apply for the job. Yes. To ask you some questions first, okay. How would you describe yourself in one word? Stunning, awe-inspiring, breathtaking. He said he wanted brain dead people. Brain dead. I see. What you say is your greatest skill? Combat, magic, cooking, and grave digging. Okay. Nice. Just the one for the job. Welcome aboard. Anything you'd like me to do for you? Highly skilled at grave digging, yes? Yes, that's what I said. Listen carefully. I need you to find some stuff for me. Stuff? That's what I said. Stuff. What kind of stuff? Dead stuff. Give me enough dead body parts for me to stitch together a complete body, which I plan to bring back to life, okay? Nice. I love the quests in this game so far. I'm so excited to, to binge them soon. Alright, so he wants body parts. Now, I have not the slightest idea of where to start looking for body parts, so that is something I will start to read ahead in the walkthrough here on the wiki. Head requires ghost speaking. Okay, something in the castle. I should have brought some stuff with me to bring the ghost speak amulet back there. Okay. Uh, brain head to the bar in Canifus. Oh yeah, there's that pickle brain. Okay. I saw that when we were walking by. I'm like, that's goofy. Let me try to loot it. I'm gonna do my best when I'm reading the walkthrough to just kind of get the sense of where to go and stop reading. Like I said in Priest in Peril, I wish that there was a, uh, a spoiler-free guide for this game that just kind of told you go here and figure it out. Um, but I, I will try to reproduce that myself by just reading the section header at each area. Pickled brain. To buy some pickled brain. What exactly is in the jar? 50 gold. Pickled brain from what animal? This is a human brain. I'll buy one. Don't eat it all at once. Okay. So we got a brain. Let me see what other stuff I can grab from the bank in preparation here. Need to go speak amulets, one of them. That's really cool. I I cannot express enough how rad it is that, like, you do this random quest back at, like, Lumbridge, I think it was, about getting an amulet that lets you talk to ghosts, and then that amulet is relevant again, you know, 70 hours later in a completely different part of the game for more flavorful purposes. Like, I am not used to that. I'm used to the uh, modern streamlined MMO that doesn't have any, like, RP quests like that. Granted, you have to use a walkthrough to do it. It's it's basically unplayable blind, but I think it's it's really cool. Okay, I'm just reading ahead for a second to see if there's any other items I should be stashing on me right now. Ah, I do need a spade. Glad I checked. It looks like each section has an items required subheader, so I'm okay to read that, and then I'll try to read like the first sentence of go here. And then avert my gaze. Now, obviously, I can't 
I can't prove how much or how little that I'm, I'm reading, but uh, it is actually more fun for me the less I know, so I am honestly doing my, my best attempt here at reading as little as possible. Back of the castle. Okay, tell me about Pinkenstrain. Neck twitches as you, but the lack of any head prevents from speaking. Is that because of the lack of ghost became alive? Tell me about Pinkenstrain. What power <laughs> emanate from the amulet of ghost speak? The air around you vibrates with the ghostly voice of the headless gardener. Oh, this game is so great! I love it! Tell you a few things about old Fenky. This castle is full of good folk, my friends. Fenky was just the castle doctor. I don't know what happened to them all, but one by one they all disappeared. When they were gone a while, I went and dug graves for them in the forest. After a while, there weren't no one left but Lord Frankenstein and himself. Old Fanky sent me to the forest to dig in a pit. Never said what for. Would you believe it? Someone chops me head off. You see who did it? Before I kicked the bucket, you mean? I'm not worried about being dead. Worst things could happen, I suppose. There ain't no lord of the castle anymore except for old Fenky. Makes you think a bit, don't it? Mm -hmm. Happened to your head. He's just gonna tell me the same story. It's in the haunted forest of the south, digging a pit for the old master. Dreadful bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> I love the dialogue in this. One sec. Look at the graves in the local area. Okay. Oh, he's coming with me. Okay, perfect. I was confused. I need to make sure he's following me the whole time, right? Maybe I'll turn off running. Ew, leeches. Ew, go away. Go southeast. Okay, I got a little bit too low on health for my taste there. Didn't realize there were so many enemies. Uh, I think I kind of found the general area where we're supposed to be. So I'm gonna stop, grab some healing items at the bank, give it another try. Try to spend less time dicking around that many enemies. I also might bring my armor set this time. Pull it out of the bank in Canifus. See you once I get over there. Oh wow, I just noticed that my attack is debuffed. I don't know what did that. Maybe the vampires? That's my best guess. This is one of my favorite shortcuts in the game that we've seen so far, I think. Super interesting. It drained my thievery stat too. I didn't even think that was possible. Huh. Oh, right on. Gonna pop in here. Top off on health. Bring maybe a couple more cakes this time so we don't have to teleport. I just didn't want to risk it, you know? Let's also go ahead and grab an armor set. Yeah, we'll keep the graceful set on for now and since it'll reduce the weight of me carrying all this stuff, then we'll swap to it. Once we go to the place we're headed to. I'm actually going to walk the rest of the way there because I want to have full agility when we're running around down in the forest. So it was near this transportation thing. It's like southish of that. This is such a cool quest. So you go back, you get this headless ghost. He hot and cold points you to where his grave is, and I assume we're going to use his body in, like, making this Frankenstein's monster thing. Very cool indeed. Northeast. Oh, I see. It's right here. There's a leaving sea level grave. To kill this vampire or get it to hide from me, maybe? Get it stuck on some terrain first, I guess. Oh wait, no, I have it. Decapitated head. Let's get out of here. Go, 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 go! That was actually kind of hard. I'm glad we had the armor and everything else. Okay, need to find out what we're doing next. Receive a decapitated head. 
I like how dangerous that was too. Okay, so that's head. We already did brain, arms, leg, and torso. Spade, armor, and food. Upstairs in Constraints Castle, there are bookcases. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> the thing they want you to do here, like I was saying, like, all the quest says is get me body parts, and this thing they want you to do is super cool, but like, who would figure this out? Without just like clicking everything and exploring every corner of the map, that's really, really awesome. It would have been fun playing this game back when it came out with just a group of friends trying to figure things out together, like pre-wiki, you know? Let's go with the joy of grave digging. digging. Hidden latch springs into place, and the bookcase swings open, revealing a secret compartment. You find a marble amulet. We resident evil now. Excuse me. Alright, let's go to the other one. Keep runoff for now in case we need full energy later. I wonder if all the other books actually have content in them, right? Men are from Mauritania, women are from Lumbridge. <laughs> Chimney sweeping on a budget. Handy maggot avoidance techniques. My family and other zombies. You discover some fascinating insights in the mind of the male kind. Nice. I think that's depending on my uh, character's gender. I'm just sweet. I find themselves brushless. Without the funds to purchase the one tool that is most essential to their trade, where does a chimney sweep without his or her brush? In this kind of situation, any normal long-handed brush might be a suitable replacement. Although when attaching extensions to the handle, make sure to use something sturdy like wire, otherwise the sweep may find themselves losing their brush and liability to the forces of gravity. Now, now, hold on, hold on. I saw in the quest requirements that I had to bring bronze wire. Is this their conveyance for it? That's insane. I love it. This book is a fantastic read. Handy maggot avoidance techniques. It's a hidden latch. It's a secret compartment. Okay, so I think I have to combine these. Six-pointed amulets. Sorry, amulets. Okay. Okay, I guess I need this to get somewhere, and that's where I have to kill something. I probably should have brought a little bit more food, but... Well, maybe I want to go get the food. Yeah, let me stop at, uh... Canifus and grab a couple more cakes just in case shit goes south. Good god, this game is crazy. Okay, so we need <laughs> we need to break this to a cave. This is where I need to be able to fight the level 51 thing. It's sort of like Priest in Peril, where it's like, you know, you have no way of knowing this, but go kill a level 30. Monk of Zamorak. Not any other Monk of Zamorak, but a little 31, it'll drop a golden key. Okay, off we go. We're going to a dungeon that's east outside the path from Firkin Strange Castle. Okay, awesome. This game is so good. I just, I love it. I've never played anything like it, and I don't know if anyone's ever going to make something like this ever again. Could you make this from scratch? Or is it just because of their commitment to, like, not changing things? Graves. Realize unknown. Rest in peace. Push memorial. Search memorial. Sand memorial. Can I use this thing on it? I know I need to do something over here with the talent, and I just don't know what. Push memorial. Examine. Depression in the stone in the shape of a six pointed star. Oh my god. Fits exactly in the depression on the coffin lid. Can I push it now? Oh man. Oh, I love this game. I wonder if I have permanent access to this place now. That's so fucking sweet. There's a little 51 experiment. Alright, I just gotta get, find somewhere where I can uh, safe spot it. Nice. 
Only because we spent all that time on magic, otherwise we would have been 20 attack and not had a chance. Okay, fantastic. Uh, get a cavern key. Go through the northwest passage until you reach a gate. Up here, maybe? That red one? These are, like, the coolest quests. Like I said, even though you need to Google to know what you're doing, they are the fucking coolest, and I love it. So there's like a face of a man on top of a dog. I see. These are like all the experiments he was making. I just used the key to let me in. Okay, gotcha. Take a key out of the chest. Climb ladder. So another key to replace the one I used to get in here, I guess. Oh, that's the only way over here because of the bridge. That's so awesome. Dig? Earth a torso. Yeah, these are the, the lords that he killed. Well, I guess he didn't kill them, but we're just putting together uh, Frankenstein's monster from... The previous lords. I really, I can't stop squeeing about this game. I think it's just so good. Crossing the bridge is not gonna happen. Got it. There's the memorial that came out of Retrace Your Steps. Go back to Unconstrain. Music down here is really fun. <laughs> like, bomb. Bomp. Uh, where I can't sing along because of the processing of my microphone. I'll be out of time. Fun song, though. I like it. I think I'm not going to do this as part of the stream, but maybe after we beat the game, after I get the quest cape, uh, without recording it, I will try to get the music cape because collecting all the music seems super fun. Southeast, right? I like how stuff in here doesn't aggro either. So cool. All right, so I just know that now that I have all these body parts, I gotta return to Think and Strain and see what he says. And if I get stuck, I'll read ahead again. I wonder why it lets you pick, Vakadim. I have body parts for you. Brought me some arms. You brought me some legs. You brought me a torso. Brought you some body parts. Any graves there? The mausoleum on the island was the castle. I need to figure out how do I get to the mausoleum. Looks like a lot of the clues are there, right? He doesn't want the head. Let me try just handing it to him here. I can't use this head. It's missing the most important part. The old gray matter. Oh, can I combine them? Squeeze the pickled brain into the decapitated head. Fantastic. You brought me a head. Those are all the parts I need. Now to sew them together. I haven't got a needle or thread, okay. A needle and five thread. Go grab it real quick. Actually, I'm, since I'm going to the bank, I'm just going to check the uh, the wiki and see what the next batch of items I should have in my inventory are. Make sure I have all of them. Ghost bee amulet, okay. Didn't know I needed that. Needle, thread, three bronze wire. Are they going to have you do the thing with the brush and the book? That's so cool. Like I said, I wouldn't have figured it out. I would not have assumed that any of the other books in there were relevant. But I guess it was the only book, it was conspicuous in that it was the only book that had, like, readable text, so... I guess I didn't read the books on the left bookshelf. Maybe they, they hinted at more stuff. This must have just been so fun to figure out. The first people that figured out how to do these quests must have had a complete blast. I used to play an old uh, Korean-style MMO around the time this game was out in like 2001 and earlier called Nexus, the Kingdom of the Winds. And it had a lot of... It was actually pretty similar to this in the way that the quests were oriented, uh, where they were really obtuse and you had to bring specific items and sometimes you had to say certain things in chat. I used to run a website called uh, Nexus Atlas. It might still be up. I'll have to check sometime. 
It was the co-host of the site with someone else. Dizzy Disaster, he's currently a Twitch streamer. Anyway, that's what we would do is the, the weekend that new content would drop, we would like spend a ton of time figuring it out and having people send us tips and hints and then we would publish the walkthrough. So in effect, we would be the only ones that would actually do the quest. Everyone else would just follow the walkthrough. I think that's super neat that like some people are getting to experience something, other people are not getting the exact same experience, you know? I guess I forgot that bronze wire doesn't stack. I don't think I need the cakes now, hopefully. You know, the inventory space is at a premium. I bought way too many chaos runes for a one level 51 enemy, but I wanted to be prepared. Uh, I thought maybe they're, maybe they're gonna make me fight more than one, they wouldn't have a 100% drop rate. I need a silver bar. So, I can't believe I just did silver for to make a freaking dodgy necklace, right? I happen to need one. Uh, hammer. Hammer. Thread, which I have a bunch of from pickpocketing and other things. Find where the hell I put it. I can't search in here, can I? I can. Thank god, I didn't know that was even a thing. Um, thread. Oof. Five thread. Needle, five thread. Need a ghost speak amulet. Silver bar hammer. Three bronze wire. And I already turned in all the body parts, okay? I think we're grand. Okay, fast forward on the way back. Ah, a needle, wonderful. Some thread, excellent. Use the needle and thread to sew the body parts together. Oh, cool! Look at that! Oh, this game is so rad. Okay. I don't know that I've ever played a game that has such, like, long, detailed quests. I am, I... Maybe Nexus, that game I was talking about, but this was like 18 years ago, so I don't really remember exactly what it was like. I'm, I'm so used to the modern post-WoW streamlined quest approach of like, go collect 10 bear asses and they're all in this zone and there aren't any like long, hour or longer quests, you know? Hone to perfection, an ancient ritual that will give life to this creature, but for this I must harness the very power of nature. The power is this, the power of lightning. Can't make lightning, you've got the wrong woman. Silence your insolent tongue. The storm that brews overhead will create the lightning. What I need you to do is repair the lightning conductor on the balcony above. I have a break soon? By law, I'm entitled to 15 minutes every... <laughs> repair the conductor and be gone. Oh, I love the dialogue in this game. It's so good. I think this game has the right level of levity. Like, part of it is that it's not unwilling to, to admit that it's a game. Which I think is kind of fits with the aesthetic that they're going for. People just call it RuneScape. <laughs> I refer things in a really on-the-nose way as, oh yeah, I'll give you a bunch of quests. Oh, that's a conductor right here, right? Repair lightning conductor. You don't have anything to repair it with. Okay. Let me look ahead here. Talk to the gardener ghost, okay. Can do. Do you know where lightning conductor mold is? Conductive mold, I used to be a bloke, sort of a handyman. Did everything around the place, fixed what was broke, swept the chimneys. Okay, so that's how you know the chimney sweep thing is relevant. Where is he now? It's like I, I, I'm appreciating it with hindsight, knowing how it was supposed to have been conveyed, but I'm still admitting that just that book alone, if I wasn't looking at the wiki, there's no way I would have put that together. Known to talk to the gardener ghost in the first place. Known to bring the ghost speak amulet. I mean, maybe I would have tried, but I would have assumed the lack of head, you know? Where the key to the shed is. Right here in my pocket. Hey, thanks. It's the shed over here. 
open cover. Search cover. Garden brush. Oh, okay. And we just read the thing that says we need to combine it with the wire. It says the right wire, yeah. I guess I can't just yet. Take from the pile of canes. <laughs> you attach the cane to the brush. Oh, and I need to have bronze wire in my inventory to attach them. Oh my god. That's so awesome. Three canes tied to it. Okay, so is there a fire? There's a fireplace. I see. <laughs> Sam in the fireplace. He's a good sweep. Give the chimney a jolly good clean out. Salmon. Okay, I need to clean it a couple times. Hmm. Maybe it's not this one. Let's see if there's another fireplace in here. I guess there's one on the other side. Okay. Guessing they don't want me to cast it repeatedly. Got a little custom like skill animation for cleaning the swim uh, chimney. There's one on both sides, gotcha. How about you? Do you have anything? Doesn't look like it. I already read those books. I might read the books in the other room and see if it gives you more hints. You should talk to ghosts. I don't know if there was any of this. Is the highest floor, right? Hopefully it drops in this one, or I have, I have to figure something else out. Check the walkthrough. The chimney is really good. A lightning conductor mold falls down out of the chimney. Oh man, that's so neat. Silver lightning conductors. A thousand and one ways to eat fried gizzards. This book leaves you contemplating vegetarianism. Practical gardening for the headless. Could have lost now. Anyone without a head could possibly read. I mean, I guess that's technically a clue that you need a head. He's headless, right? Human taxidermy for nincompoops. One of the scribbles says none good enough. Had to lock them in the caverns. Yeah, it's all there. Like, one of the things is, if I can strain, like, you need to go, um... You need to go dig around in the forest, but like I think there's only one tile in the forest that's legal. I, I guess technically you could look for graves in the forest and find it without the help of the ghost. But I think you still need the ghost speak amulet in order to get the shed key. To get the chimney sweep. Okay, let's uh let's go find a furnace, right? Got our silver bar. Let's see if there are any in here. Not in Canifus. I'll just... There's one in Varrock, right? I think there's one in Varrock. There's one in Lumbridge. Oh, there's one in Edgeville. Yeah, I'll just go to the one in Lumbridge. Yo, Earth Staff. Okay, so we'll make this thing, and then we'll go back to Varrock, and then we'll go back to Canifus, so it'll be fine. I'm gonna restock my prayer points while I'm here. There it is, craft lightning rod. Wow. And that gave me 50 crafting. I guess that's why there was a crafting prerequisite for doing this. What was the crafting prerequisite? 20 crafting. No oh, shit. I wonder what the thievery was for. We haven't had to use it so far. Huh. Okay, uh. Back to Varrock. Air staff, I should say. Stuff like this, I'm like, is the conductor mold gonna come up again in some later quest? I can't throw out any of this stuff, right? Oh, that would be so wild. Like, I have no idea why it would. It's a little bit unclear as to how doing this quest is going to unlock the uh, the werewolf agility course. Like, what does any of this have to do with werewolves, right? Or agility. But, whatever. I'm down. It's cool. 
Okay, here we go. Let's put the lightning conductor here. See what happens. Whoa, you repair the lightning conductor not one moment too soon. A tremendous bolt of lightning melts the new conductor and power blazes through the castle, if only briefly. Wow. It's too bad that uh, I don't have a webcam running. I don't think we want it most of the time because most of the time it's just me like leaning back, eating goldfish and <laughs> grinding shit. But, uh, oh, where's the monster? Did it get up and leave? Maybe we'll have to fight it. Uh, what was I going to say? I have the biggest grin on my face while doing this quest. It's so fun. Did it work then? Afraid it did all too well. I can't see it anywhere. Tricked it into going up to the tower and there it remains, imprisoned. The creature wasn't all you hoped then? Oh, what have I done? Oh, I see. We're developing a sense of right and wrong now, are we? A bit late for that, I'd say. We have no control over it. It's coming to get me. What do you want me to do about it? Destroy it. Okay, take the key to the tower. I guess I don't have any... I deposited all my food, so... It's... I can always run, I guess, and then go back to town and grab food if it's hard. So I don't know if I'll be able to safe spot it in such a presumably tiny room. Oh, I can't attack him. Talk to! <laughs> How very appropriate to the source material, right? I'm commanded to destroy you, creature. Oh, that's not very nice. You feeling okay? Absolutely. Never better. He's drunk. You look very dangerous. How do I look? I don't know, do you? Have a look at yourself. Ah! <laughs> I love all the dialogue. Like, you know, I, I'm getting to the point where I'm stressed out about doing quests in a game like Final Fantasy XIV because there's just so much dialogue to say so little a lot of the time. And, like, there's just enough to get the idea across. You get it, right? The creature becomes instantly sober. Horror all too evident in its undead eyes. I suppose I'm partly to blame for this. It was him I wager. Fenkenstrain, Fenkenstrain, wasn't it? Who are, were you? I am the Lord of the North Coast! Of course, they set that up perfectly. Plant payoff. Fenkenstrain was the castle doctor. The castle wasn't really abandoned when he found it? Is that what he told you? No, no, this castle was once full of people and life. Fenkenstrain advised me to sell them to the vampires, which I am sad to say I did. Oh. I found your brain in a jar in cannabis. It must have sold you too. Nice. That I will not speak. There lies memories that should rest with the dead, the living unable to bear them. That said, I'm leaving this dreadful place, whether I get paid or not. Please stop Fenkenstein from carrying on his experiments once and for all, so no other poor soul has to endure suffering such as that, that of my people and I. How exactly do I do that? How can I stop his experiments? Take the ring of Karos from him. What is this ring? It was my birthright passed down to me through the ages, its origin forgot. The ring of Karos, or Karos, has many powers, but Frankenstein has spent them to his own evil purposes. Without the power of the ring, he will not be able to raise the dead from their sleep. It has one other extremely important use. It confuses the werewolf's senses, making them believe that they smell one of their own kind. <laughs> So that's how I use this to get to the agility course? That's so nuts. Thank God for wikis, right? But that's so... I love it. I love it. Without the ring, Fick and Strain will be at their mercy. Okay. So, I kill him and take the ring? Tax on an option. I'm gonna try talking to him. Yeah, have you destroyed it? Never, now that he's told me the truth. It's exactly what I feared. Why did you have to pick Rollegard's brain of all brains? Three working for you. No, is it pickpocketing him? Is that why we need it? Oh my god! <laughs> oh man, I wonder if you could have pickpocketed him. I didn't even try it, I assumed he was just a higher level NPC. That is rad. Oh, that was tons of fun. That was tons of fun. I am I am delighted. Uh, I think I'm going to take a break after that before we go start trying this Werewolf Agility course. I think I have to like deposit a bunch of stuff and plan out what I'm going to bring to the course, but that that was cool. Two quest points, Ring of Karas, 
which while wearing it confuses uh, werewolves, right? The Ring of Karos. I don't think I'm using anything in my ring slot anyway, right? Okay, cool. Talk to Lord Rolagarth. How goes it, friend? Stole the ring from Fenconstrain. I saw him climb up into the tower to hide. It doesn't matter. Soon the werewolves will come for him, and his experiments will be forever ceased. Do you want the ring back? It's yours, after all. No, you keep it. Werewolves hunger for the scent of live flesh. I have no need for the ring. I have my castle back, if not my soul. <laughs> and now he's Lord Rolagarth. Dude. Fucking awesome. I wonder if that's all phased. Like, is am I the only one that can see him if I go in there with a friend? Because if, if that is phasing, that's really early. It's like, what, like 2007? I'm trying to think, when did, uh, when did Wrath of the Lich King do phasing? Maybe it was around the same time. Anyway, that's still impressive and incredibly cool. Uh, it actually makes me wonder if, like, that's how the devs come up with quests that quests like the, their, their creative scaffolding for coming up with a quest is looking at the skills in the game and being like, what if we combined this one, this one, this one, and this one, what kind of quest would that be? Uh, I do stuff like that in D and D all the time when I'm trying to like design a dungeon, like, okay, what are the themes that I want to do and how can I mix and match them? Fucking, that is, that was so cool. Uh, we're gonna take a break for a little bit. I'm gonna grab some lunch and uh, we'll be back with the Werewolf Agility course. See you soon. All right, hello darkness, my old friend. It's time to go do an agility course, the new werewolf one. So we'll mute while I do some inventory cleanup here and then I'm gonna head over that way and I'll uh, be back once we start the course. So I'm gonna start by trying the cores without any buffs or anything, but um, I think I'm gonna need to get those those summer pies from the Grand Exchange before I like go hard on it. So I'm just gonna give it a shot first, and then we'll probably teleport to Verak. I have the tools for it, right? Yeah. Teleport to Verak, buy some meat pies, kind of get situated, and then uh, get into a groove and go for it. What's beneath the trap door? It's an agility course designed for lycanthropes like ourselves, my friend. I come in and use it? Certainly. The cavern contains two courses. On the west side is a level 60 agility course. The east side is a level 25 skull ball course. Okay. Good luck down there, my friend. Remember, to the west is the main agility course. Got it. I got a bunch of... Holy crap. This is cool. Skull ball is not what we want. Agility boss. Cool name. How do I use the agility course? I'll throw you a stick, which you need to fetch as quickly as possible from the area beyond the pipes. Be wary of the death slide. You must hang by your teeth, and if your strength is not up to the job, you will fall into a pit of spikes. Don't carry too much extra weight. Bring the stick back to the werewolf waiting at the end of the death slide to get your agility bonus. Throw your stick as soon as you jump on the first stone. Awesome. Alright, here we go. First time doing this one. Stepping stone. That's cool, it turns red when the stick is nearby, I guess. There's the stick. Squeeze through the pipe. Music down here is pretty great. Got the stick. Here comes the death slide where we can take upwards of 30 damage, I guess. Glad we leveled some combat. You take your headgear off before you try the death slide, otherwise you won't be able to get enough grip with your teeth. Oh. Interesting. So you don't get the set bonus. Alright, first try. Oh my god, 200 XP? Gift stick, agility trainer. 380, oh my god. This gives an insane amount of XP compared to the one we were doing before. Okay, I think he throws it whether I talk to him or not. We'll keep doing it until I fall on the death slide, and then I'll uh, teleport out and we'll find something new to do. That's super cool, though. Oh, hey, it's the frog. God damn it, I just jumped over the thing. Maybe the little 
port to me. I missed it last time because of not being close enough to them. When we're done, there's a human with your name on it. Talk to Frog. Speak to the Frog Prince. I'd like to. Can it spawn closer to me, please? It might be the only one that follows me. I don't know if I can go backwards. Let's try. Don't look backwards. Keep going forwards. Yeah, I think we're going to miss it again. It's a bummer. All right. Keep talking during the death slide. This is pretty stressful to do. It's like the most intense one in, in the whole game, right? I wonder if the lap counter includes the stick bonus at the end. Yeah, I missed the frogs. Okay. That's zero for two on getting to do the frog quest, so let's see if we get it next time. They always spawn like right as I'm clicking an agility obstacle. Twenty-eight damage. Holy shit. <laughs> Alright, they're not screwing around with that. I guess can I still get the bonus with the stick even if I fail the death slide? I can! Okay. So I lose out on 200 XP for falling there. Alright, we gotta go get uh, Summer Pies. I'm gonna grab a bunch of those and we'll come back. So I think we want a mix of Summer Pies and, like, cakes. Use the cakes in case... Uh... Because we don't want to, like, wait. The main reason we want the summer pies is for the agility boost, not for the healing. But we wouldn't want to waste bites of it for no reason. Nine seventy-three coins. That's expensive. Okay, I can afford it though. All right. Oh yeah, we should be good. Summer pie. Give me... Let's do a hundred of them. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got myself into this situation. I'm talking from, we'll say, three digits hours played. Uh, that's that's an understatement. It doesn't really express exactly how much further ahead I am than this episode But I am in the distant 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 future distant future and I have to say that buying these summer pies and then the way I used the summer pies was the single dumbest thing I've done in three digits Use your imagination. It's more than you probably think it is hours of play uh, I wish I hadn't done this I don't know what I was thinking. It wasn't necessary. I had already established the Tin Man concept at this point. And I guess I just saw 95 cooking and I was like, oh yeah, I can do that. No problem. Oh no. It's a problem. It is a problem. Uh, we'll get back to the action here, but this decision, <laughs> I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. Uh, uploading this as TwitchCon is coming up. Probably going to spend a good chunk of TwitchCon working on it. Enjoy! I'll offer to pay a little bit more, a thousand, I guess. Next thing is I think I need my weight to be zero, so that requires us to do a couple things here. First, I need to remove my helmet because that's not going to count. Oh, we're completely fine, even with all the pies. Okay. I was worried that we wouldn't be, but that's that's great. Alright. And I think I can run to the cannabis bank and get my remaining pies and cakes and stuff once I run out of healing items. I was worried that those would be so heavy, like the, the wiki is like, oh man, don't use the graceful set, use stuff that lowers your weight even more because blah 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 blah, it doesn't actually matter. I guess I'm going to need an inventory slot open, but I'll get one from eating a pie for uh, the agility bonus. 
All right, mute as we run back to the court. I don't know when this course was added, but I'm assuming the whole remove your helmet thing is very deliberate to keep you from getting the benefit of the graceful set. I guess you could equip it and then... Oh yeah, I think that's right. I think you want to unequip it when you get to that spot and then turn it back on because it looks like a really long run, so you probably run out of stamina pretty often. So I'll likely keep this menu open. Okay, we're back. Can you eat a summer pie? And let's do this. Twenty-six damage. Oof. <laughs> okay, heal enough that I don't get one shot. I probably want to turn on my rapid healing prayer. Looks like if I want to get the full boost, I need to eat the whole pie. I only get plus four. But this one's kind of mean. You actually have to be in range of this stepping stone, otherwise it says you can't reach that. Fell again. Hoo boy. I guess at 72, it gets significantly better in terms of the rate at which you fail that, so... If I can get to agility 67, then 68 should be easier. The XP rate should go up, apparently. 26 damage. Whew, golly. Can't believe we didn't fall the first time. Now I've fallen every single time, right? I like this course because there's a lot of ways to micro and do slightly better at it. Like it looks like the time, the tick you turn in, the stick to the trainers, that matters. The tick on which you pick up the stick matters. Uh, you can't actually click on the stepping stone until you're one tick away from the tile adjacent to it. So you can try to optimize that. So this one's a lot less autopilot. I mean, it's still doing the same thing over and over, which is kind of awful, but it's much better. Climbing shit is tricky because I think you have to click on the specific rocks. So you can't just click on the entire thing. 25 damage. Ow. Like you at least get to turn in the stick if you fall though. That's like 380 XP, so. Could be worse. The death slide is terrifying. Every single time I go down it, I'm like, oh my god. The enormous XP you can get from the uh, death slide, the variable damage you can take while falling, and the consolation prize you still get by turning in the stick, which is pretty significant, all makes this a really fun agility course. There's that moment of excitement that you look forward to every single time. I wonder if that werewolf saying, give my regards to the ground or now for a true test of teeth tells you whether you're about to fail or not. So far, I think I've always failed when he says, give my regards. We'll see. Shit, I forgot to turn in the stick last route. Bummer. Alright, as long as we don't fall, this is 67 agility, which should make us get way more XP in this per hour from the summer pies. Don't fall. She hung a little bit halfway through and I thought she was going to. Here it comes! I still need 14 XP, god damn it! 
That's two stepping stones. How uh, how climactic? One, two. Hooray! Sixty-seven agility. All right, I still need to finish paying my tax, my back taxes from yesterday. Uh, that means one more level up, but uh, I need to take a break. So we'll come back to it in a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this lap. And then I'm going to head back to Canifus, do a little bit of banking activity to prepare for this for our next session. Once we get to 68, got to think here. Once we get to 68, I think I'm going to continue doing one level of agility per day, per session, uh, until hitting 70. And then I might see how much XP is required to go to 71 and see if that means we're going to bail on the whole one level of agility per day thing. If it ever takes anywhere in excess of two hours for a level, that's that's going to be my bail point. 68 is really the only level that we need, but... More agility seems better? We're not going to 99. Got to find a stopping point. Let the game tell me what the stopping point is. I was reading apparently that Werewolf Course is like the best XP per hour in the game because of the bonus for returning the stick at the end. Uh, but you need to be perfect and like click the stepping stones and exactly the right tick and even recommends that you like have a second account block the agility boss that you're supposed to turn the stick into uh, so that he's always standing in exactly the same square and you can just tap it without losing precious seconds running past him it's kind of crazy so to that end I might still check out let's see what, what other agility courses are there I think there's a rooftop at 70. Rooftop courses, I've never been there. There's two at 70, one at 75, one at 80, one at 90. Okay. So when we unlock those, I will probably bounce to check them out, to like do a lap on them, but I think if we're gonna keep doing agility, it's gonna be the werewolf course. And I can do the werewolf course completely muted, Fast forward at 64x or even faster. So hopefully when you see me run those, you're not having to watch too much of it. Just just enjoying this little bar up in the corner. Fill real fast from your perspective. High tins. You don't really want or need the cape now that I think about it. The guy doesn't mention bringing the graceful set and then equipping and unequipping it around that... Uh, obstacle, but it seemed to be really helping. Like, it took a really long time to run out of stamina. The guide keeps saying, you need to bring, you know, lots and lots and lots of stamina potions, which I have never messed with. I don't think that's necessary. Okay, so we have two slots open. That leaves me one slot for the graceful cap, one slot for the stick. And I think these are cheap enough and I have enough of them banked. Let's see, I've got 63 plus 20 something. I've got plenty to be able to use to, to do that course over and over indefinitely without really needing to stress out about things going bad for us. So that's it. We'll be back later. Thanks for watching. Howdy folks, we are back and it is time to finish paying our back taxes. That means running the werewolf agility course for one more level of agility. Now technically that's going to take us to 68 agility which is our what I'm calling the soft cap. It's the highest agility necessary in order to be able to complete quests in the game. So we could stop there, and I might fall back on the you know reality that we could stop there. But I think it would look really nice if we got it to 70, like my round base 10 numbers. So we're not going to do that tonight. Don't worry, you're not going to do back to back three hours of werewolf agility course. Uh, but I probably will. Uh, continue to do the, you know, one level a day thing until we hit 70. So two more days of this, and you shouldn't see any more agility mucking up your video. Same thing as before, I think we're just going to try to fast forward this as much as possible. So what to me will probably be about an hour, to you might end up being more like 60 seconds, if I speed it up correctly. I can get in this trapdoor. I don't know why it's giving me so much trouble. There we go. Okay. 
Let's begin the fast forwarding. Uh, I might pop in if something interesting happens, like if I die, God forbid. But I'm going to try my damn just to not do that. See ya. Quick comment, I think every time he says, give my regards to the ground, I've fallen. So I haven't noticed if he says it and I don't fall. I think I've fallen when he doesn't say it. But I'll try to keep an eye on it, just for fun. Yo, so we're at the a little bit over the 50% mark. Definitely taking over an hour to level. And watching the XP per hour, I don't know that this is actually competitive, at least at this level, with um, the Sears Village agility course. I think it's because almost all of the XP is in this uh, death slide, so if you fall, it's a huge penalty. Maybe when you're actually 72, this place is better. Not that we'll ever get to 72. Uh, and seeing the XP curve, I'm really starting to think I'm going to be okay with 68. Maybe we'll come back to agility to get those last two levels down the line, but maybe once we get to 68, we can just relieve ourselves of the task. Um, but it looks like the best I can manage in this is about 45k XP an hour. I'm going to go back and do Sears Village for a little bit, <clears throat> just to see if I can do something similar. Sears Village drops Marks of Grace, which granted I don't need for the costume anymore. Uh, the... the Grace outfit, but I guess you can use them to get money-making stuff, which can't hurt. And worst case, I guess if I have some Marks of Grace banks. God forbid if I ever die with this gear set, I've, I'm going to quit the game. It took too much work. It would be too hard to reproduce. I don't think I could reproduce it without being very, very sad. No, we're, we won't quit the game, but still. Let me reset my meters here. All right, this will get on a fast forward. Is fa yeah. this will get on a 60x, 64x fast forward for a little while, uh, and then I'll come back and see what the XP per hour looks like compared to the werewolf course. I was doing some, real quick, I was doing some agility research um, after we got the graceful outfit, thinking, hey, you know, is there something out there that's better than the Sears Village one? And apparently Sears Village is really good if you can do this really complicated thing to unlock something from the Achievement Diary that lets you move the teleport location for Camelot to right outside this bank, which... It's so specific and weird, but I guess you get to the end, and instead of running back up to the bank, you just cast Teleport, and it saves you enough time to add, like, 10,000 XP an hour onto your raid or something crazy like that. Anyway. Okay, so it looks like we're getting, like, 43k an hour. 2k an hour slower compared to peak Werewolf Course, but that's, like, doing everything perfect in the Werewolf Course and not falling, you know, several times in a row. So this is a lot less effort, a lot less intensive, and it gives Marks of Grace, which I guess a Mark of Grace is worth about 10,000 gold, so. Still doesn't really compete with Swamp Toads uh, in terms of money making, but I'd like to bank the Marks just in case we ever have a mishap with the, with the outfit. Uh, we'll stick to this one. We got 61% of the way there. Oof. I think we're going to be done at 68. It's easy for me when I'm not playing RuneScape to like psych myself up. When I'm not playing RuneScape and I'm not doing agility courses, to psych myself up like, oh yeah, well, we're going to get to 70. That's a nice round number. Like, no, fuck, fuck 70. It's, 68 is fine. 
that's fine. It's a it's a impressive number. It's probably higher than a lot of players take their agility in this game. It has a significant effect, significant enough effect already on our uh, run energy, and it's literally all that we need in order to qualify for every quest in the game. Damn, we're actually up to 47k per hour on this one. So I was thinking, like, this doesn't feel right for the werewolf course. I, I do think if you, like, never fail the death slide that the werewolf course is nuts XP, but basically the, the whole lap is a wash, practically, if you fail it, so. Also, it's hard to describe this, and you probably couldn't see it during the fast-forwarding, but, like, the werewolf course, the, the triggers are, like, almost pixel-precise. Like if you wanna um if you wanna hurdle over the little gates, like the entire highlighted gate doesn't actually it is not actually legal to click. You have to specifically click one of the like three pixel wide bars on the gate in order to hop over it. And then the uh the like little rocks that you have to climb to get up to the death slide, you have to actually click on a rock. You can't just click on the uh slope. We've seen a couple of those in the shortcuts, like the Mauritania shortcut is kind of annoying to click on because I think it's like, if it's not pixel perfect, there's only a couple pixels that are illegal to click on. Anyway, point being... Oh shit, I'm gonna move it a little bit. Hopefully they teleport one more time. Posty Pete's message from Molly, he needs your help urgently. Sure. This is the one that I should be ashamed of, right? Yeah. Evil Twin. Didn't actually mean to quit Evil Twin, but that's okay. It's kind of frustrating. Sixty-eight agility. That is the end of the story. We got sixty pretty much back to back, and then one level per session. Sixty, sixty-one, sixty-two, sixty-three, sixty-four. We did it. It's over. I don't need to touch it ever again. I might. I might do seventy, but it's not. We're not doing this once per session anymore, I'm just saying. When I get nostalgic for agility, I might do it. We'll see. I ended up getting 10 marks of grace or 11 marks of grace in the process, so that's cool. I might be able to cash that in for the um, thing you can sell on the Grand Exchange for money. But uh, I gotta get to bed. This particular session's not quite over. We still got about 90 minutes left, so I think when the video snaps, uh, we'll be doing fishing. So we'll see how far we can get with fishing in 90 minutes. Uh, before we cut to the next episode, so see you in a bit. Hey, hey, we're back once again. Got about 90 minutes left in the video. Let's go ahead and do some fishing. Now that agility is done. Oh, man. Interesting stuff. Alright, I think I just need a net, right? Yeah, I think I can cook stuff in Alcaride. I guess I don't know how much time I'm spending on the fish that I've already started, but I'll go ahead and do that, and then I can start researching whatever I'm doing next once I hit to like 10 or 15 or something. Um, let's see, you probably want the Lumbridge Teleport. So I think that's Earth Runes. Yeah, that's a ticket. Oh, I'm gonna need money to cross the stupid bridge. Uh. <laughs> Someone in uh, chat spoiled that, like, there's a quest you can do that makes the gate free. It's like one of the most mild spoilers ever. 
great. It doesn't really give too, too much away. Something I would very much like to have, I guess, is what I'll say. <laughs> Let's see if I can get a quick 10 coins from these gabos, and then we'll walk out the door and head to the fishing point. Last time we fished was in, uh, yeah, the live stream. I think we got it to like level five, and I got nine from the the cat uh, random event. Anyway, last time we were here, I almost got my closest, probably one of my top three closest moments of, to death. Got ambushed by a scorpion while I got up to feed the cats, but I managed to make it back to my computer before dying. We still haven't died in this account. I'm not gonna win. I think I don't have to worry about these scorpions, though, because they, uh... Yeah, they're level 14, and we're more than double their level, so they shouldn't aggro anymore. Alright, time to go AFK. It gets my subscriber database updated for the month. Sounds great. Fishing level 10. Once I get five more, I'll look up where we're heading next, I think. That's a good strategy. And we got our first full inventory. Let's go pop by the range, cook everything up. May as well cook it. Positive to think. So, oh, the range isn't that much further. I was going to say, I could bank it and then run from the bank to the range. Let's, let's just get the cooking out of the way. Maybe we'll get some extra cooking XP. We made it all the way to 30. Uh, cooking, just doing pretty much chicken in the early combat levels, so it might be a little bit slower getting any more levels there. Fishing 11. Keep at it. And we have another full inventory. Man, fishing is the shit for <laughs> me doing stuff at the same time being AFK. I don't know if there are more active forms of fishing later, but uh, this is great. I've gotten a lot done already just from this first round. So I guess you'll get to enjoy the 64x fast forward rate. I might hit 31 cooking here also. 31 cooking. Fishing 12, three more. I think we stay here, if I'm reading correctly, that we can start getting anchovies instead of shrimp. Um, this, this place is fine, basically. If so, that's, that's cool. I think the next time we change then would be around level 20, so. Enjoy watching that bar fill up super fast. 13. Another full inventory. Let's go uh, cook. I love the OS buddy. You're not fishing. They, they have like Windows notifications. Can you turn on Windows notifications for fishing to tell you when you're idle? That's funny. I might check that here while the, while the shrimp cooks. Let's see. I think I turned off notification sounds earlier. I'll, I'll turn it on just for fun. There's already an in-game don't noise when you max out your inventory size, but... Fishing 13. Cooking 32, with one shrimp left, whatever. You are now qualified to enter the prestigious Chef's Guild. That's the first guild that we've unlocked as far as I know. I don't think there's an agility guild, I'll have to check. Maybe I should look into what we can get there later, right on. All right, deposit and back to Buizna. Fishing 14. 
Just like that. One more and I think we get anchovy. One XP until 15. And there it is. Fishing is now 15. Now try to net anchovies. Okay, what I guess I don't know is how do I get anchovies instead of shrimp? Yeah, uh, look that up really quick because I think it's the same node. It looks like it, right? All right, completed an easy task. Nice. Well, we got one, so I assume it just means that it's added to the fishing pool. Now I can have a chance to get both of them. So I think we just keep going till twenty. That's when I get something new. Fishing 16. Okay, you get quite a bit more XP for anchovies than you do for shrimps. Mackerel, oysters, and caskets. The large net. Large net now. Oh, okay. Get in there. If I run to cook, if you ever see that weird like ripple on the mouse comes in from the side of the screen, uh, I use a software called Input Director. So I have two machines. I have a streaming PC and I have a gaming PC. And the gaming PC doesn't run anything but games. Like, there's basically no apps on here at all. Um, there we go. And Input Director lets me share the same mouse and keyboard across the two of them. I do have a dedicated mouse for the gaming PC that I mostly use for RuneScape, so you're not seeing that ripple effect all the time, but given the amount of uh, multitasking and stream work I'm able to do while fishing, it's just easier for me to swipe the mouse into what is effectively my center monitor. Super cool though, if you've ever had a situation where you've got multiple machines, I can't recommend the software enough. It lets you pretend like the two machines are one machine by just kind of smoothly transitioning your mouse between them as you move off monitor like you would with you know multiple monitors in normal circumstances. Hey it's fishing 17. Cooking 33. You know I love cooking because I keep getting it for free just from leveling other things. I haven't like targeted cooking at all so far and we're already at level 33. Also, fishing is great. Uh, fishing is one of my favorite skills in MMOs. If you've watched any of my other MMO playthroughs, you might know that like every time a new Final Fantasy XIV expansion comes out, I uh, I wait to do instance contents with my friends Haypax and Matt and Flarewing. So I always have gotten fishing to max level long before getting the main combat class to max level in a new expansion. It's pretty funny. So fishing in this game is particularly great because I I can really get work done. Like there's a couple skills that I have to pay attention to every 30 seconds or so, and there's certain kinds of work I can do. Like I think I was mentioning way back during the Falador Agility course that I was able to manage both of my uh, computer mice at the same time and slowly update, run, run, uh, rerun um, thumbnails and that sort of a thing on Twitch. But it. It w I wasn't really able to focus on it, and there were a lot of like work tasks that I wouldn't be able to get done while doing agility courses. But, uh, but fishing, on the other hand, is so AFK that I can just have it in my peripheral vision while I'm doing the subscriber database. And th this is great. This means that you know, regardless of what my time commitments look like, if uh, you know I've got babysitting duties in the morning and I want to be careful having a hot mic so y'all aren't hearing Sesame Street and a three-year-old in the background. Uh, I could probably at least throw up mute, just fish whenever I'm doing subscriber database or rerun database updates. Speaking of which, fishing 18. So that's cool. I'm sure that others have had this experience, probably with their phone, right, of like popping into work, sitting at your desk, answering emails, Jumping into Alcarid, clicking on a fishing net spot, and just kind of keeping your phone in view to see when you need to switch nodes. I think I mentioned this during the Falador Agility course as well, but it might be fun one of these days, if we're still doing this, this RuneScape grinding and multitasking, for me to like do a picture-in-picture -picture of the other thing that I'm doing. <laughs> 
just so you can see exactly how productive this game can be. I'm sure most people watching this series, especially if they've made it this far, have uh, have done this before, right? And I've heard people talk about there being skills in this game that are particularly AFKable. Fishing 19, almost to 20, and then we change things up a bit, it looks like. Whoa, random event. What's this? Oh, the treasure chest. This one. Sure can. He just gives me, like, gold bars and stuff, right? Gold things. Oh, he gives me one of these three things, I think, is the way it works. The bar. Bull. Bar. Sweet. Gold bar. Take it. Back to fishing. Fishing 20, which means we've unlocked new content. Wonderful. You now try fly fishing for trout. Sweet. I can fly fish. Uh, let me research how that works really quick. I'm going to cook these shrimp and anchovies, figure out what the deal is with fly fishing, and then we're going to move locations. Also, looks like we've got about 30 minutes left. Uh, but I would like to just go ahead and cap out 30 fishing in this video, so we'll go over by a little bit to get to that point. Cooking 34. I'm really interested to see how high cooking gets without us, like, intentionally trying to train it. Okay, so I think I did my research. It looks like you need feathers for, uh, fly fishing, which, like, makes sense. Um... I used a bunch of feathers in getting fletching to 20. So I want to see how many I have left from our ancient farming times. Hey, 2,146. That should, uh, should hold us over for a while. Actually, that's good to know that you need feathers for fishing training, uh, as well as fletching, because that means when I go to level strength, I could spend some time on chickens or see if there's another enemy that drops feathers later in the game and maybe has more hit points so I can get more value out of my uh, strength damage. All right, so I need feathers and I need a fly fishing rod, which I can buy in limited areas, actually. Um, there's a fishing shop that sells one in Port Sarum which I'm pretty sure I've been to before for the bar crawl quest. Sounds familiar. I wonder if you can get back to Tutorial Island. Port Serum. Let's just go ahead and search for it. Okay. Remington. Southeast of Falador is probably my best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my... Uh, Teleporty thingamajigs again. Falador is water runes. And rough. Alright, more agility shortcuts. Every time I go through one of these, I feel justified in having spent effort on this. It's like, if agility only gave me additional run speed region, that would be enough to make me want to do it. But the fact that it has such an impact on uh, just getting around in general because of shortcuts, and apparently in skilling thieving, it reduces the damage that you take from getting caught a lot. It helps to assuage my guilt at spending so much time at the start of the run farming agility. If you're still watching by this episode, thank you for not piecing out after the beginning. <laughs> a lot of new player experiences. Let's do a million things. Like, no, no, no. We're doing one thing. We're doing it hardcore so that we unlock the ability to play the game. All right, so there should be a fishing shop here. I think I see it. Get on the pier if I can. Okay, uh, fishing rod. I guess I'll grab a regular fishing rod while I'm here, just in case. Fly fishing rod, harpoon, again, I'll just grab one just in case. 
lobster pot, I could see being valuable. Fishing bait. How much is this? Oh, I have no coins. God damn it. I do this so often. Is there not a bank in Port Serum? Oh, that's kind of a bummer. I think I... Oh, I don't quite have access to the crafting guild. Oh, crap. I'm gonna have to make this run again. Big ol' womp womp. It's only, well... Let's see. It's only a few coins to get all the stuff that I want to buy from him, so maybe I can, like, kill some goblins. It's probably going to be slower, but it's going to feel less miserable if I do something like that, so I'm going to punch some goblins to death real quick and see what we can pull off here. Oh, it's not my thievery's 30. I should see if there's someone I can pickpocket in town really quick. See if I've got 10 gold already from just a few goblins, so. See, at least we're training strength instead of just running again back from Falador. This is totally a good decision. She just ran for it, right? Well, I got a regular fishing rod and a fly fishing rod for now. I can always. It's not that long of a walk if I need to come get one later. Alright, uh, so I have the fishing rod, I have the feathers, I need to stop at a bank and deposit most of this crap. What all am I bringing with me? Where where are we going for this? It's trout, right? Raw trout. Barbarian Village, it sounds like, is a pretty popular destination, and popular might be bad in this case, but hey, let's, uh, let's give it a try. I think Verox my best shot there. Seems like I have a lot of options, and the options are generally based on proximity to a bank and to a fire to cook the fish. I'm not interested in power leveling fishing, that is, like, catching the fish and then throwing them out. I very much want to, uh, cook all of the fish. I'm gonna try depositing all my runes. It might be useful to be able to teleport eventually, but I'm not going to worry about it for this trip. I might grab them back when I pop back at the bank if it is faster than what I'm about to be doing here. I think it's these two fishing spots here along this river. Alright, off we go. Oh yeah, it's popular. This must be the... Uh, permanent fire over here. Gotcha. Although I said I don't want a power level, I guess I don't mind not keeping the fish after we cook them, like we were doing with cooked chicken earlier. I got a decent amount of cooked food in my bank, so I can just take it over to the uh, fire, cook it all, drop it all, move along. Actually, that's a tough call. Cook Trout does kill, heal for seven. That's pretty good. Alright, well, I don't want to make too many bank trips, so I'm not going to pick up this other guy's fish that he's dropping. I, I did on the first round, but I won't continue to do that. Uh, I'll go ahead and drop my burnt fish. Like, that's a, pretty much a free way to level up... Um, you're cooking, right? Go to one of these locations where somebody's just dropping all their fish and make a fire and cook it all. That's so what we'll do is we'll take advantage of the fire to make sure that we're bringing an entire inventory of cooked fish rather than burnt fish back to the Edgeville Bank. Fishing 21, very nice. Um, and then we'll kind of get a sense of what the run back is like. I'm trying to figure out if teleporting back to Varrock is better than running up to Edgeville and back. Okay, it looks like I can run all the way to the Edgeville bank and back and still have like 57 energy. 
I assume standing still for fishing is going to get us all the way back to 100 every time, so... I think we'll go ahead and bank this, at least for a while. I might eventually drop it, but, but 7 healing per trout is not bad. Might be something I want to use for topping off when I have to stop at the bank instead of the shrimp, which are only three apiece. Fishing 22. Cool. Eight more to go. Let's see. After fishing 30, I'm trying to get as much stuff to 30 as possible. I'm gonna have to research construction, hunter, uh, herb lore. <laughs> Maybe farmer, maybe rune crafter. Fishing twenty three, fantastic. You now search for, fish for cod with a large net. Cool. Cooking thirty five. Fishing twenty four or six. Go. We're gonna do it. Fishing 25. Very nice. Multiples of 5 are always fun. Now try fishing for pike. 5 more. Cooking 36. Man, it's just, levels are flying by now. Cooking tutor and lumberage, huh? Fishing 26. I'm trying to set... Oh, there it is. Hmm. I wonder if I can change that sound so it doesn't freak anybody. Well, I guess it'll mostly get fast forwarded in y'all's case. I was trying to set an idle alert running. Uh, because it's a little bit harder for me to see in my peripheral and these ones are running out. They also run out a bit faster since I think I'm sharing a node with the other players here. I'm not sure on that. Maybe not. Um, after the idle alert triggers one more time, I'm gonna see if I can take a short break from fishing to adjust the sound effect that it makes. It just needs to be something that gets my attention that doesn't make you think that your computer is shitting the bed. So <laughs> I'll see what I can find. Okay, let me change that effect so that, uh, oh shoot, I should make sure that that, let me look at that again. I'll edit this out if I have to. Oh no, it just shows my local IP. This is input director. I was just worried that it might be showing something on screen that I wouldn't want to share. It's just on my network, not a big deal. Uh, sounds, program events, notification. I'm gonna, we're gonna hear it, sorry. Can I not test them in here or something? What the hell? Maybe I'll just turn off the sound aspect. Hmm. Well, we'll see what it sounds like here. I got a couple other things I can try to swap it to. Fishing 27. Uh, that's less intrusive. I guess it's still popping up on the screen, which is not great, but could be worse. That's okay, I guess this will mostly be fast forwarded anyway, so as long as it's not obscuring the live split timer, should not be a big deal. We'll see if there are any other skills comparable to fishing where I want to turn that feature on. Possibly not, but it's useful for this because uh, you can often be sitting at a node for a really variable amount of time. Depending on where you're doing nodes, it can be hard to tell. Actually, what I think I want for that sound effect is the the earthbound cursor noise that I use on my stream for sounds. I think it's not very 
obtrusive and I know to listen for it. And it's also not anyone's Windows sound effects, so for whatever reason you hear it when I'm not idle, it's not going to make anyone panic. Let's see, normalize volume, cursor. Let's throw that in my Google Drive here. Need to find a way to dismiss the notification from Windows more easily. Okay, so I'm going to deposit these fish, and then I'm going to swing over to Windows 10 really quick and add the sound effect in. Damn it, I have to convert it to a wave. I'll start doing that while I'm fishing. <laughs> I don't think I ever realized that Windows notifications have to be wave files. Uh, go get Audacity on the streaming PC, it's fine. So normally I would consider like cutting out me alt tabbing out to adjust settings while fishing, but I feel like that might be part of the RuneScape fishing experience. <laughs> so <laughs> usually I don't have to do any alt tabbing because of uh, you know having a gaming PC separate from a streaming PC, and I can look stuff up on other monitors. In that case, I needed to actually do it on the system, and I think it was uh, it was appropriate to the true fishing skill experience. All right, we're still working our way to 30. Let me take a look here. We're 23 minutes over. That's okay. We'll probably end up pushing maybe an hour over, but no big deal. Fishing 28. All right. Slimy eels. Right on. Cooking 37. Man, where am I going to get cooking to just just as a consequence of leveling fishing? Since I'm refusing to... Uh, since I'm refusing to power level fishing and just drop the fish in, in the spot that I'm in. I'm really interested to see how high I can get it. You know, something I haven't thought about so far, like when I went to install this game, OS Buddy was heavily recommended to me and kind of... The implication was that almost everyone that plays RuneScape uses something like OS Buddy or RuneLite or something like that. Um, I guess if you're watching this far and you don't hate OS Buddy and you don't think that I'm an impure, awful player for using it, <laughs> I, I'm not going to hear from people that, that hate uh, third-party clients, I think, because they will be long gone by the time they get to, what is it, like episode 10 or something? fish grinding. Yeah, I'm curious what the player community's opinion is on using third-party apps versus the main client. Some things like having the skill experience tracker up all the time are just too valuable, I think, for at least me to, to leave behind. Alright, we need two more levels of fishing. We're 62% of the way there to 29. So I don't think this should take too much more time. Let's go ahead and deposit these trouts and then we'll be back. But regarding OS Buddy, I'm at a point now where I've activated a ton of plugins from it, and I like basically all the plugins we're using. I'm usually not a, a mod guy, I try to play whatever the default experience is for a game. But the plugins in this one are just super useful quality of life improvements. Um, the only one that I think is a little bit questionable, the plugins related to puzzle solving. Like I think there's one that solves uh, like, uh, there's like a sliding block puzzle that I've heard about from Chaos Factor, and I think one of the OS Betty options will solve it for you. And the Clue Scroll Solver. But I guess in the case of the Clue Scroll Solver, uh, you're gonna, you're just gonna wiki it anyway. So it's just saving you a, a wiki search. I actually didn't realize until I saw my wife Andrea playing this game on, uh, on mobile that like, the base client doesn't have the texts for items above it. Doesn't summarize how much it costs on the Grand Exchange or what it high elks for. Fishing 29, one more to go. Cooking 38. Oh, I just love all the cooking levels. 
Actually, I'm going to run back because we only need two more fish to hit 30 and close out the session. So I'll just catch two and not keep them. There is 30 fishing. Cool. Now try fishing for salmon. I guess we can catch them here and they're pretty decent XP. It's, it's cool. All right, uh, that is gonna wrap. I'll go ahead and talk about the wrap of this video as I head to the bank. Um, so things are looking things are looking pretty great. You know, we did that creature of uh, fen constrained quest. It's kind of given me more insight into what to expect quests to be like in the future. The thing I am most excited about right now is going through that quest list and doing all of them and being able to update my precious spreadsheet as we clear individual quests along the way and see which new ones unlock. But before I do that, I would really like to get all skills or as many skills as possible to 30. And we are getting pretty close to that, right? Uh, we need to do strength, which I need to figure out what I'm going to pair that with. It might be trying to get feathers for chickens since we don't need leather anymore. Uh, so strength, herb lore, I need to figure out how I'm going to do or herb lore. I haven't really pieced that together yet. Uh, fire making. Fire making is going to depend on me getting wood cutting the rest of the way. So is fletching. And I'm being stubborn and saying that uh, instead of doing wood cutting now, which I could technically do with a steel hatchet, I'm going to wait until I'm able to equip a, get my hands on a mithril hatchet. That requires taking Slayer to 40, which requires grinding with magic a little bit more uh, and just doing some Slayer tasks. And then we unlock the Basilisk, which has like a 1 in 128 chance of dropping a Mithril Hatchet. So mostly that's an elaborate excuse for me to do more Slayer before getting to questing because Slayer is so fun for me. Uh, so we're, we're coming close. I think that that's going to be the second to last thing I do uh, before we switch to the questing focus. Once everything else is 30, go do... Uh, Slayer 40, get the Mithril Hatchet, do Woodcutting 30, Fletching 30, Fire Making 30, uh, and then it's quest time. So I think next section I'm going to research construction, hunter, runecrafting, and I don't know about farming. Farming kind of seems like it's not an active skill. It's like a skill that you're supposed to do while you're doing other stuff. And there's probably certain kinds of other tasks that are particularly effective to do while managing farming nodes. Like, um, I guess we have to figure out what skill that is. Maybe, maybe construction. Maybe we can do construction and farming at the same time. Uh, I'll look into that and we'll come up with something. But yeah, that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, did a lot of different things here. I'll do a lot of different things in the next one. And I'd say we've got a couple episodes before we get to the quest focus, but I'm pretty pumped for that. Thanks. Bye.